Nestle's Ever Ready, the instant cocoa. Nestle's Quick for great chocolate milk. And Nestle's Chocolate Bars now present Space Patrol! High adventure in the wild, vast reaches of space. Visions of daring in the name of interplanetary justice. Travel into the future with Buzz Corey, Commander-in-Chief of the Space Patrol! In today's transcribed Space Patrol adventure, Buzz and Happy have landed on a distant planet to help 500 enslaved workers escape from a mine. Happy waits in the grounded ship while Buzz walks toward the robot-guarded mine shaft. Cadet Happy to Commander Corey. Go ahead, Happy. I just picked up something in the viewscope screen. It's one of those robot cargo jobs, and it's heading this way. Happy, those ships never land anywhere in Gabonic except the city spaceport. Well, this one's sure barreling in, sir. If it keeps its present trajectory, it'll land right in the mining area. Land? It's set to crash. Crash? Mr. Ruger's work. We can't stop that ship. It'll explode and destroy every living person in this area. We'll return in just a moment with the thrilling story of Frightened Robots. Space Patrollers, this is Commander Corey. Let me ask you something. When Mom and Dad had their breakfast coffee this morning, did you have a good hot drink? You know, you need a real morning warm-up for all-day power. That's why you should always start the day the Space Patrol way, with a big cup of Nestle's Instant Cocoa. It's just loaded with good hot nourishment for real energy. And Nestle's makes the greatest hot cocoa you've ever tasted. It's rich, it's smooth, it's delicious. It's really out of this universe. And wait till you see how fast and easy it is to fix. And Nestle's Ever Ready is so easy, it just about makes itself. Now listen, here's all you do. You just put one, two, three teaspoons of Nestle's in your cup and add hot water. That's all. Now you're all ready to drink it and get your supply of morning pep. A Nestle's Ever Ready is the complete cocoa, too. You add nothing but water because whole milk and sugar are already in it. You ought to see the lineup around here when they sound the Nestle's call. Everybody goes for that delicious Nestle's chocolate flavor. That goes for me, too. Well, why don't you get the Nestle Space Patrol habit? Ask Mom to stock your galley with Nestle's and drink it regularly, the way we do. And you'll have power to spare. That's Nestle's Ever Ready Cocoa in the bright red can. And now, today's Space Patrol adventure, The Frightened Robots. Commander Corey and Cadet Happy are in the Terra 5, high above the surface of the planet Gobonic, a world ruled by robots. They have just blasted off from a forest region where they said goodbye to Mono and Anila, two friends whom the space patrollers rescued from enemies in the principal city of the planet. While Buzz is at the controls, Happy idly adjusts the space patrol periscope, the amazing hyperspace optical device that can show a close-up view of any part of space. You see anything interesting, Happy? There's a train of cars, sir, probably headed for one of the farming areas outside the city. Kobanik is depressing planet, huh? Still, I hate to leave it. Kind of Mono and his friends, you mean? Yes. The Bonnock won't be free until the robots are overthrown. That might take years. I sure wish we could do something to help them. Well, it's not our job to meddle into other people's internal affairs, huh? What we've done was just to save Mono's life. We acted as individuals, not as agents of the United Planets. Hey, I thought those trains left the city empty. That's what Mono told us. They brought back full of supplies, and half of them sent to Warmont. Oh, these cars are open, sir. They're like we'd haul ore in, but... Well, some of them are full of people. Well, farm workers, probably. They're just jammed into those cars. Oh, those poor people. I know how you feel, huh? That's something we have no control over. Our job is to explore Warmark for radioactive minerals. Better cut off that periscope before you feel worse than you do now. Yes, sir. Well, hey, we've got to give this to Mona when we let him out of the ship. Hmm? Oh, look, now his robot control unit. Uh-huh. Hey, it might come in handy if uh, Mona or any of his friends have to return to the city. Well, perhaps it's just as well Mona doesn't have it. If he's caught with one of the administrator's robot controls, I hate to think what would happen to him. Agent 7 of Gobonic City calling ARL Camp 21. Commander, it's one of our space officers. Turn up the volume, man. Agent 7 of Gobonic City calling ARL Camp 21. Come in, please. ARL Camp, that's an anti-robot league hideout. ARL Camp 21 here. Go ahead, Agent 7. That's Mono. Hey, they're operating already. They've distributed our miniature space phones inside the city. Warn all the league members not to try to enter the city. Don't even contact us by space phone. The robots are rounding us up. We've been betrayed. No, I don't think so. The roundup isn't very selective. But this morning, 500 workers from all sections were picked out and put aboard a work train. They're on their way to the K-Light mines. K-Light mines? How did you find out? The robots broadcasted all over the city. Obviously, it's a disciplinary action. Of course. K-Light is useless. K-Light dust is harmful to human beings. 500 workers are diverted from essential production and sent to the K-Light mines. There's only one explanation. 
It's a warning to everybody that stop trying to overthrow the robot. Exactly. Anyone even suspected of aberrationist tendencies, off they go to the K-Light mines. We'll suspend all activities for the time being. Be careful. ARL Camp 21 out. Now we know where those carloads of people are going. To the K-Light mines. Oh, that's criminal, half. It's cruel punishment. And completely useless. I wonder. I wonder just how we're going to make those robots are. You think the administrators, uh, like our friend Roknar, might have more control than they let out? Mm, it's possible. Trouble is, Mona and his friends can't find that out. Only administrators can get near the robot master control. Our periscope could show us that master control. But would that be interfering? Mm, maybe it is. But when robots can send hundreds of innocent people into slavery, I say it's time to interfere. So do I. I'll get that map of the city Mona drew for me. Then we'll use the periscope and find out how that robot system operates. I've got it, sir. There's the central administration building. Okay, Hap, now we'll scan it floor by floor with the periscope till we find the master robot control section. Whatever information we find out, we can pass on to Mono. Uh-huh. Well, the lower floor seems to be a headquarters for the robot control. Uh-oh. Here's something interesting. There's a shaft right down the center of the building. Elevator shaft? It looks like it. I don't see any elevator. Wait. Something's happening at the bottom. A robot just entered the shaft at the ground floor level. There's a hall leading to it from the street. Oh, a private entrance for Zards, huh? Apparently. Yeah. The robot is rising straight up the shaft. Look. Wow. Eight, ten, fifteen, probably twenty stories up. Now it's stopped in midair. It touched the control on its belt. The gravity belt. That's it, Hap. Now it's reaching out and pulling itself toward a platform at the side of the shaft. And opening a door. A robot with a gravity belt. Why, not even Roknar had one of those. Evidently, just the robots have them. Now the robot's walking down a corridor. It's opening a door. Hap, look. Handing something to somebody. Hey, that's Roknar. Roknar receiving a message from the robot. And by the looks of that room, that's Roknar's living quarters. Right there in the administration building. Now the robot's leaving. Hap, if we had one of those belts, we'd get into the administration center. And then we could save those people from the, from the K-Light mines. Yes. Then they go back to Gobanic? Right. We've got those Gobanic work clothes in the ship. Roknar's robot control unit. Well, how do we get the gravity belts? We can find a robot outside the city walls. We'll inactivate him with the control unit. It'll be dark in the city in about an hour. We'll set the ship down a mile or so from the walls. On one of the top floors of the administration building in Gobanic City... Administrator Roknar, in charge of Class H functions of patrol robots, has been summoned to the office of Daruga, chief administrator of Gobonic. You realize, of course, that you were the first human being from Gobonic to make a space flight in 300 years. You are now an unknown variable where our computers are concerned. Unknown variables are dangerous to our robot-controlled economy. I, uh, I don't understand, Daruga. Uh, the space flight hasn't changed. Me. As I explained, I was forced into the ship by these... Visitors from another solar system. You, Roknar, may have been contaminated by your brief exposure to these two strangers from outer space. Oh, no, no. Uh, they will not trouble us again. It is all forgotten. The computers will not forget. I had to feed false data into the master computer to arrange this shipment of workers to the Kalite mines. Some sections are now shorthanded. That means longer hours, a general speed up, and lower efficiency. Yes, but there will be no more anti robot talk among the workers. They're thoroughly frightened. Right, Roknar, is a factor that cannot be measured by the computers. Our robot controls can maintain proper balance only if the human population can be kept calm and placid. Fear and hope of change, these must be kept to the minimum at all times. Yes, I understand. And I will keep my robot patrols alert for any sign of aberration. Very well. You may go, Administrator Roknar. Thank you, Chief Daruga. Special Directive 47 to Class G Robots. Administrator Roknar, in charge of Class H functions of robots, is now under surveillance until further notice. Record and report aberrationist behavior. Deluga. With rockets cut out, the Terra 5 descends to the ground by repeller ray a mile from the city. Under cover of darkness, Buzz and Happy make their way to the high wall. Plain, drab coveralls of the Gobonic workers cover their space patrol uniforms. 
At the gate stands a single robot guard. There's just one of them. He's got a gravity belt. Maybe we can get another one inside. I think he sees us now. I'm going to immobilize him with the control unit. The robot's frozen, sir. I'll handle this job alone here. I'll take the robot's gravity belt and enter the city. You stand watching the ship. Yes, sir. Hope there's no trick to removing the robot's gravity belt. Turn of this knob should lift me to the top of the wall. Sure wish I were going with you, sir. I'll keep a miniature space phone on her. I'll keep you informed if I have a chance. Now, here goes. Hey, it works. Return to the ship, Happy. Yes, sir. Good luck, Commander. From the top of the wall, Commander Corey looks down inside the city. Seeing no one near, he lowers himself to the ground with a gravity belt. With casual gait, but on the alert, Buzz walks through the streets to the administration building, avoiding the curious inspection of robot patrols by pressing a switch on his robot control unit. A walk down a deserted corridor brings him to a tall shaft extending up to the top floor of the building. Mr. Corey, that happens. Can you lead me? Yes, sir. Everything okay? Oh, fine. At the bottom of the robot shaft. I can get up the rope in my room without being seen. Here goes. The scrambly belt's a great thing. I'll try to pick one up for you on the way back to the ship. Fine, Commander. Yeah. I'm on the landing ledge. Don't try to contact me, Hap. Someone might hear the space phone. I'm entering the corridor now. Your hands up, Rupna. What do you mean by... Hold it. Don't try to reach for your robot control. Yeah, I'd better remove it from your belt. I don't want to use this ray gun on you, so behave yourself. You've got to get out of here. If you're found in my room, I... You'll be I... sent to the K-Lite mine, perhaps. With the other 500 prisoners. How did you know about that? You answer my questions first, Rupna. Do the administrators rule the robots? Or do the robots rule you? Uh, I don't understand what you mean. Just this. Computers juggled a lot of work quarters picked 500 human slaves to go to the K-Light mine. K-Light is useless. If those people work in the mines very long, they'll get sick. For many of them, it'll be fatal. Isn't that right? Yes, I suppose so. All right. Was that K-Light deal automatic, or did somebody prime the computers? I want an answer, Rook, now. The, uh, the computers may have been adjusted a little. And they could also be adjusted to bring those people back. That's impossible. I think you can find a way to work it out. Even if you burn out a couple of keys in the computers, it's better than forcing 500 people to mine poisonous cable. The computers cannot be changed, I tell now you. Now, look, Rookna, I can do a lot of mischief to your control robots. I can push button police. I can make you look pretty foolish. I can do all this without hurting a single human being, not even an administrator. Hey, you wouldn't wreck my robot. Unless you bring those people back from the mines, you will be in the junk business. How about it? Uh, I think it can be arranged. If you give me time to talk to the chief administrator, uh, of course he must never know. Ah, uh, but he does know. Uh, Deruga. Both of you stand perfectly still. This weapon in my hand can destroy you both. A move from either of you, and I shall use it. We'll return to Space Patrol in just a moment. Say, here comes Tony Sides. Well, well, I'll be. He's growing a mustache. Who? Me, Captain Tufel? What do you mean? Oh, well, you sure have. It's brown and quite a long one, too. Ah, gee whiz. That's no mustache. That's some Nestle's cocoa. You see? I had a cup just a few minutes ago. Well, I guess I was in such a hurry to drink it, I got some on my upper lip. I'll just lick it off. Gee, that's good. Yes, that's what everybody says, Tony. You know, Nestle's Everetti makes the best cocoa in the universe. It's so rich, so chocolatey, and so smooth. You know, since we got the space patrol habit at our house, all my brothers and sisters drink Nestle's cocoa for breakfast. We love the way it tastes, and boy, we sure love the pep it gives us. Starting the day with a hot drink is real smart. 
Especially when that drink is Nestle's Cocoa. You said it. And Nestle's Everetti is so easy to fix, it practically makes itself. You just put one, two, three teaspoons in your cup and add hot water, and that's all there is to it. Milk and sugar are already in Nestle, so you don't have to add a thing. Gang, how about you? If you haven't tried the Space Patrol way to start the day, don't wait anymore. Chow up for delicious Nestle's Cocoa. Ask your mom to get Nestle's in the bright red can. And now back to our Space Patrol adventure, the frightened robots. Buzz and Happy are determined to save several hundred inhabitants of the planet Gobonic who've been forced to mine the poisonous mineral Kalite. While Happy remains in the Terra 5, Buzz undertakes a daring one-man expedition into the city. With the aid of a gravity belt taken from a patrol robot, Buzz rises to the 20th level of the administration building where he encounters Roknar, an official of the robot-ruled government. Just as Buzz obtains a promise from the unwilling Roknar, the chief administrator, Daruga, suddenly appears and holds Buzz at bay with a powerful weapon. Drop your weapon. Go on, drop it. All right. No, Roknar, don't touch it. But Daruga, I was only going to hand it to you. Indeed. Here I find you in a cozy conference with a worker. A worker who has somehow been smuggled up above the third floor. But he's not a worker. He's Commander Pori, one of the visitors from another solar system. So much the worse for you, Rokner. I was right. You have been contaminated by this stranger. I heard you plotting against the robots. No, no, Deruga. He forced his way in here. He threatened to destroy the patrol robots unless I agree to bring those workers back from the K-Light mine. He's telling the truth, Deruga. Your presence here introduces new factors. Variables with which our computers may be unable to cope. And your administrators will have to do some thinking yourselves for a change. Not if I eliminate the disturbing factor. If I destroy you, now, right here, the robots need never be disturbed with new information. That's it, Daruga. Get rid of Corey and everything will be just as it was before he... He did it! Corey, let go of me! Hold still, Rokna! Let go of him, Corey. You can't escape. There are Z-type robots out in the corridor. How about this window behind me? Beyond it is a straight drop, 20 levels above the street. You see? You are trapped. Come on, Rokna. You're going through that window. No, no, no. We'll be killed. Corey, stop. Stop or I'll fire. If you shoot, you destroy Rokna, one of your own administrators. Corey, I... 